Hey guys, welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we'll be working our way through one of the mini MCAT practice problems found at MCATSelfPrep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. I'm Andrew George, a 99th percentile MCAT tutor, and I will be walking you through today's practice problem as if you were one of my private tutoring students. Be sure to hit pause and try this practice problem for yourself before watching my explanation. Let's talk about the key differences between enantiomers and diastereomers. Enantiomers are stereoisomers that are non-superimposable mirror images, whereas diastereomers are stereoisomers that are non-superimposable non-mirror images. So the key difference there is that enantiomers are mirror images, whereas diastereomers are non-mirror images. And you can tell which one you're looking at by paying attention to their stereocenters. If the stereocenters are the opposite configuration at every stereocenter, then you know you're dealing with an enantiomer as is the case with diurethros and elorethros. Notice that diurethros has two R configurations and then elorethros has two S configurations. They're the opposite at every stereocenter. So we know we're dealing with an enantiomer. Whereas diastereomers, they differ at some stereocenters, but not all. Basically, if it's not an enantiomer, you're likely dealing with a diastereomer. And elthreos and elorethros are good examples of diastereomers. One has an R and an S, one has an S and an S. So they differ at some stereocenters, but not all. Therefore, these are definitely diastereomers. Now that we understand how to recognize enantiomers versus diastereomers, let's talk about some of their other key differences. As we talked about before, enantiomers are stereoisomers that are mirror images of each other, whereas diastereomers are stereoisomers that are not mirror Im images of each other. And something else you should know is that you cannot have diastereomers with just one stereocenter. Because if they only had one stereocenter and it was opposite, we'd call it an enantiomer. Diastereomers need multiple stereocenters so that they can be the opposite at some stereocenters, but not all. So that's why enantiomers can have one or more stereocenters, and diastereomers usually need to have at least two stereocenters. Next up, physical properties. Enantiomers have the exact same physical properties like melting point and boiling point, density and all that, except that they differ in how they rotate plane polarized light. And I think this is an awesome phenomenon where if you take a solution of one enantiomer and shine plane polarized light through it, it's going to rotate light in the opposite direction as its other enantiomer pair. Pretty awesome stuff. On the other hand, diastereomers have different physical properties completely. Their melting points, boiling points are going to be different from each other. And now chemical properties. Enantiomers have the exact same chemical properties, Except something you should know about this is that their chemical properties will differ when they're in a chiral environment. So if they're dealing with another chiral molecule that they're interacting with, it's going to be a different interaction depending on which enantiomer is involved. So that's something you might want to know about this one. Diastereomers, they differ in their reactivity quite a bit, so their chemical properties are different. And finally, if we're dealing with molecules with two stereocenters, they're going to have the opposite configuration at both stereocenters for enantiomers, but have the opposite at one, but not the other, for diastereomers. Let's take a second look at the question stem. Which of the following statements is true of diastereomers? They have similar physical properties. Nope. They're going to have different physical properties. They have similar chemical slash biological properties. Nope. They're going to have different chemical slash biological properties. They're going to interact differently with the molecules around them. Therefore, answer choice B, 2 and 4, is the best answer here. If you enjoyed this MCAT question of the day, be sure to give it a like. And for more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course found at MCATSelfPrep.com. And if you are really looking to maximize your MCAT score, feel free to visit my tutoring profile page and request a free 10-minute phone consultation. I would love to chat with you about your situation and how you can maximize your MCAT score. I look forward to hearing from you soon. We'll see you next time.